In part one, we talked about the mysterious Count of St. Germain. He's been called a prophet, a sorcerer, and an immortal. He's been spotted all over the world for a thousand years. Some say, and even the Count himself said, that he was Cartophilus, the legendary wandering Jew cursed by Jesus with immortality. The Count of St. Germain advised kings, queens, and emperors. He was present at every significant event in European history, and even was an important contributor to America's struggle for independence. He spoke a dozen languages fluently. He played piano and violin like a virtuoso. He was an expert in art, science, politics, philosophy, and history. He left an impression on everyone he met. But today, we'll see if we can separate the man from the myth. In paranormal history, there isn't a more fascinating figure than the Count of St. Germain, and there are countless stories about him spanning hundreds of years. But how many of these stories are true? Every story about the Count has him fluent in a dozen languages, and speaks so well that he fools native speakers. This isn't accurate. In historical records, the first we hear about St. Germain is his arrest in 1745 for being a spy. But the quote is never printed in full. When English authorities arrested St. Germain, they said he spoke Spanish and Portuguese like a native speaker, and he was fluent in Italian and spoke French with a Piedmont accent. He spoke in broken English, enough to get by, but nowhere near fluent. They assumed he was from Spain or Portugal. Now, it is true that King Louis was very taken with him, but King Louis was not a deep thinker. The king's chief advisors considered Saint Germain an arrogant imposter, and the king's doctor said he was a quack. And the count disappeared from France for several years not because of some spiritual mission, but because the king's chief minister ordered his arrest, so he fled the country. When Saint Germain turned Casanova's coin into gold, it wasn't through a chemical process, it was sleight of hand something that irritated Casanova. And Casanova met him a few times and said he was brilliant, but Casanova also said the Count was a con man, a spy, or both. When St. Germain fixed the King's diamond, the diamond the Count brought back was of a different cut and slightly larger. St. Germain said the diamond becoming larger was part of the process. He had an answer for everything. Everything. Madame Pompadour, the king's chief mistress, was very familiar with precious stones, and she looked through a box of the Count's gems, laughed and said they were fake. She did say they were very pretty, but still fake. Now, yes, Voltaire did say that the Count of St. Germain is the man who knows everything and never dies. I've seen this quoted a million times. But what's rarely said is, Voltaire was being sarcastic. He was pretty much saying, oh yeah, that guy. Now, the story about the Countess who recognizes him from 50 years ago, that happened. But the entire story isn't often told. The Countess, who was almost 90, was senile, and everybody knew this. Even St. Germain said so. When the Countess thought she met St. Germain years earlier, she simply made a mistake and set a legend in motion. Oh, what about him meeting Jesus and all that? Right. Those stories got started because an English comedian named Millard Gower started impersonating St. Germain as part of his act. And every time Gower performed, the stories got crazier. Wait, so this guy's a legend because some comic was doing a bit? Yep. Remember the Count's last stop was the castle of Prince Edward in Germany. Prince Edward said the Count of St. Germain was a small, gray-haired, elderly man, not a chatty 45-year-old. And when St. Germain died in 1784... Allegedly. Allegedly. His death was witnessed, and his belongings were meticulously documented. There were no diamonds, no elixirs, and the only money to his name was about 80 Reich dollars. Ooh, how many millions is that? Uh, it's about 100 bucks. Oh. When theosophist Madame Blavatsky said she had St. Germain's secret documents, she actually had a copy of a memoir written a few years earlier. And the memoir didn't contain mystical knowledge, just biographical information and stories about a charming man who is good at talking people's ears off. Eventually, Blavatsky was exposed as a fraud by a whistleblower in her movement. But plenty of occultists were fans of the Count. Look, maybe Guy Ballard really did meet St. Germain on Mount Shasta. I, I don't know, I wasn't there. But I do know that Ballard plagiarized a lot of his material from science fiction books and was found guilty of fraud, so you be the judge. So do we know who he really was? Mm, maybe. The Count of St. Germain is said to be from everywhere. Some say he was a high priest from Atlantis, or he was a prophet from the Middle East. He's said to be Merlin the Wizard, Plato, St. Alban, Christopher Columbus, one of the last Templar Knights. People claim that Roger Bacon was the Count. Then they claimed Francis Bacon was the Count. Well, well, what about Kevin Bacon? I wouldn't be surprised. Kevin Bacon's been around a long time. Now, on his deathbed, the Count of St. Germain confessed that he was the son of Francis Ricosi II, Prince of Transylvania, and he was 88 years old. 
To avoid being a political target, he was sent to Italy to study with the last of the Medicis. Now, this would explain his wealth, his excellent education, and why he spoke so many languages. But still, if this story were true, he would have been almost 70 years old when he was at Versailles, not 45. And his father, Prince Francis, would have been 15 years old when the Count was born. Not impossible, not likely. Another theory is that St. Germain was an Alsatian Jew named Simon Wolfe, born around 1700, and he hid his identity to avoid religious persecution. Others say he was a Spanish Jesuit named Amar. His true title was the Marquis de Betmar from Portugal. This explains why his Spanish and Portuguese sounded so perfect. None other than P.T. Barnum took an interest in the Count and did his own research. And nobody knows a good scammer better than Barnum. Using Barnum's research and the research from other historians, I think the best theory is that St. Germain was the son of an Italian princess. The princess had an illicit affair with an Italian tax collector. When the Count was a child, he was separated from his mother. He was given a world-class education, a lump sum of money, and instructions to hide his true identity. This theory suggests he was born around 1690 in a region of Italy called San Germano. What does San Germano mean in English? St. Germain. Oh uh, yeah, I should have put that together myself. San Germano is on the northern border of Italy and Switzerland. Directly to the west is France. And this region is called Piedmont. That so-called unidentifiable accent he spoke with, native speakers identified his accent as distinctly Piedmont, something that's been documented. And if he had been born in this area, he would have grown up speaking French, Italian, and German interchangeably. The jump to speaking Spanish and Portuguese from there isn't difficult. And if you're fluent in French and German, English would come pretty easily too. But still, these are just theories. Nobody except the Count himself knew his true origin. He enjoyed the mystery that surrounded him, so he fed into his own myth wherever he could. He was a legend, yes, but a legendary con man. He never stole from anyone, but he was perfectly happy to live rent-free in castles, palaces, and lavish apartments all over Europe. The Count was a brilliant man who used his charm and intellect to befriend wealthy, influential people to support his lifestyle. Eventually, his charm and money ran out, and he died virtually penniless. Even in the face of all this evidence, many people still believe he is an immortal who walks the earth to this day. I don't, but the legend of the Count of St. Germain is such a good one, I want to be wrong. But I can tell you this for certain. If I'm ever sitting on a quiet mountain and approached by a mysterious man who claims to be the Count of St. Germain, I'll be skeptical. But still, I'm gonna listen to what that man has to say, because you never know. Thanks for hanging out with us today. My name is AJ, that's Hecklefish. This has been The Y Files. If you had fun or learned anything, do us a favor and like, subscribe, comment, share. That stuff really helps out a small channel. Until next time, be safe, be kind, and know that you are appreciated.